Yo, what's going on, everybody? It is 1 p.m. here in Crystal Lake, Illinois. That means it's time for another a live stream. Today is Thursday, May 25th, 2023. Because it's Thursday, it's happy hour. And this year for happy hour, we're not getting boozy necessarily, but we are going to make it happy by bringing in guests. And this week, the guest is going to be Matt Choi, Matt Choi 6 on Instagram, because the uh, first five Matt Choi's still wanted to keep their name and they wouldn't give it up to Matt. So he's Matt Choi 6. But you guys all know him as Matt Choi. Uh, I've had him in a lot of videos. You've probably seen him around, but you've probably also seen his content. He's got like, I just checked his numbers like this morning, 170,000 followers on Instagram, 140,000, on YouTube. I haven't looked at TikTok in a long time, but he's probably, he's gotta be over a million by this point. So like he's been making really fascinating running content, uh, physical fitness content, and also kind of like entrepreneurship, social media type content as well. So he's kind of like touching a lot of different topics. And I also think speaking to a lot of different runners. And that's another reason why I want to talk to him today. Plus, he's another Korean, uh, I guess, influencer. I'm an influencer is what I tell people. That's what I do for a living. And I guess you could put him in that bucket too. But for to round out my happy hours for A-A-N-H-P-I, awareness month i thought i'd bring in matt before we bring him in let's have everyone listening on the podcast on the audio only version hope you guys are having a good run today this morning was cold here in crystal lake uh i wore uh i finished out the tracksmith elliot in terms of my mileage for testing so i wore like all tracksmith today this shirt uh a long sleeve like a jacket and then the full tights so like it was chilly. Hopefully uh, you had some good weather on your run uh, as you're listening to this. And if you're uh, watching this on YouTube later, but not live, welcome to you guys as well. You are listening to the number one running podcast to listen to in the background while you're trying to figure out how you can incorporate lifting leg day into your uh, daily and weekly running regimen. I just got back from the gym myself. Um I'm kind of figuring it out, but you know, I got some questions, so maybe Matt can help me out too. Uh, let's add a couple people on in the chat before we head over uh, and bring Matt in. Uh, C Town fan says this should be interesting. Lee Chad said he's excited for this, and uh, Dan Diana Rickard says I'm excited to see this collab. I can already feel the energy. And the Manor Run says afternoon, everyone. Ready to be hyped enough to jump through a wall for the next hour. <laughs> All right. Uh, there was one other one that I saw that was really funny earlier. <laughs> Jennifer Herring says, yes, can't wait for the shirts off. I joked earlier this week that we were both going to do this live stream with no shirts, <laughs> which I don't think I've ever seen that before in a live stream, but that would have been funny. And Jennifer says, if, I, I, if only I knew it was Matt when a guy in front of me in Boston with no shirt uh, was talking about content. That's awesome. All right. Um, let's bring him in. Without further ado, here we go. We got uh, Matt Choi. What's going on, Matt? How are you? What's up, man? I, look, shirts are on, Kofuzi. So already, <laughs> some people might not recognize me. Well, you know what? Uh, we're just trying to show that you are multidimensional. You know, you can be the shirts off guy, which you did not run Boston with a shirt on, right? I did not run Boston with a shirt. Yeah, you, you wore one in the warm. I saw you in the crowds in the morning. You had like a jacket. You so you ha you have clothes. You just didn't have them on. I have to respect the people. I can't be out there shirtless 24 seven. So it's just when the race is about to start, the tarps are coming off. Okay. <laughs> All right. There you go. <laughs> awesome. How are you? I'm doing excellent, man. I'm super pumped to, to chat here with you and um, I'm super excited, man. It's uh, it, it should be a fun conversation. Yeah. Yeah. I've been telling people already that you and I, well, when did you and I talk? I interviewed you. For, I was going to put it on the YouTube channel a long time ago. Do you remember when that was? I think it might have been like like seven eight months ago, but we like the yeah. audio was super like janky and yeah. I, I I don't know I didn't want yeah it, it wasn't the greatest audio so yeah, but yeah, yeah roughly eight months ago yeah I mean it feels like forever ago um but yeah like we we lost that one too technical difficulties unfortunately um but yeah last week for happy hour I had uh, Jakey Cho on and he was mentioning that two of his favorite. Uh, running creators are uh, me and you. So I was like, you know what? We got we got to get it. Maybe, you know, next time we'll have all three of us uh, in the same live. Maybe we could do that together. But I was I like, that. all right, you know, we got, we got all the three. Uh, we get three different Korean creators in the running space in the same room at the same time. Um, have you ever met Jakey Cho before? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I chat with him on a consistent basis, like yeah. weekly almost. And um, I see him anytime I'm in New York. Um, I always uh, I, I make time to get lunch with him because uh, I do he always knows the good food spots. Oh yeah, of course. Well, of course he does. <laughs> where did you? Do you remember where you went the last time with Jakey? We went to a Chinese, um, a Chinese fusion spot. 
Okay. It was it was in oh, shoot I forgot exactly where but it was it was really good I mean we it, it was unreal it was a kind of, it was a hole in the wall spot yeah and it was one of the best Chinese spots I've been to in New York awesome that's super cool um, and now you are you're based out of Austin now and you've been based out of Austin for a little while but you're originally from New Jersey right originally yep yeah I'm trying to figure out how much do we need to go back in terms of history because we've like already had this conversation I'm ready to move on so I'm like, <laughs> I think there might be some people in this in this chat here and who might watch this later that might want to get a little bit more context so um, let's bring the, let's go back a little bit you grew up in New Jersey mm -hmm. right and then you in high school you were a football player and a reluctant track athlete is that right very much so good memory <laughs> and you ran the 400 or is it the, I ran the one in the two but my coach put me in the four and i wasn't a fan okay <laughs> i yeah i think you know what since then i've heard you tell that story like on tiktok and on instagram and stuff like that too but uh it's good to see that like uh you know despite some of your early difficulties with getting with the program and running you were able to turn it around and now you get with the program and you write the programs now Somewhat. I mean, it definitely was a, you know, at that point, it's a, it's a, it's a big shift, right? From a football player mindset to then go run a, like pretty much a sprint of a 400 meter, mm -hmm. completely different mindset. And at that point, I would say I was a lot mentally weaker. And over the years, I built up some more mental calluses to withstand the 400. Okay. <laughs> uh, and I, I think I recently saw that you just did like a mile time trial. Have you ever, have you recently done a 400 meter time trial? So I, I did a mile, like I did somewhat like, so that workout that I did on the track, I just kind of wanted to see what my splits were, but all out mile I've hit in the sub five, but I've never done an all out 400. Okay. And I did a split workout where people were like, I'm not taking advice from someone that can't run under 60 seconds. And I'm like, I wasn't trying to, <laughs> but <Okay. laughs> you know how social media is. Sometimes it gets uh, misconstrued with uh, when you, once you post and people get their own interpretation. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that though, like, I, I, I know that like to t kind of touch on that and not to make it turn too negative too quickly, but like, I know that like when I post certain kinds of content, I get a lot of, let's say, um, constructive criticism. It's not constructive, but let's call it that. Um, I, I feel like, you know, you're a muscular dude. You typically don't have a shirt on. You're a good looking guy, charismatic, lots of energy. I feel like you probably get a lot of, let's say, constructive criticism on a lot of what you do. Is that, am I right on that? Uh, you know, I, I would say there is some in there for sure. Okay. okay. How, do you, how, do you, how do you deal with that? I mean, you know, I, I, I'm a big fan of Tim Grover, you know, Michael Jordan and, and Kobe Bryant's uh, trainer. And, and he had this line in his book. It said, feedback and criticism, it, feedback and criticism is the same thing. It's just a matter of how you hear it. And I think it's through social, it's so easy to feel like, oh my God, people are hating on me, X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. But it's just their own feedback loop, right? And for me, just I don't allow it to really bother me because I know that people don't have the full context. And in social, it's so easy to get sensitive when you get negativity and hate. Mm -hmm. But I think for me, I just twist it on its head where it's like, hey, these people might be feeling some type of way. They might not even know who I am really. So I can't allow it to really enter my own brain and make me feel like a shitty person because I just know that that's not my intent. Mm -hmm. So I would say that's how I treat it. Okay. I like that. It's a, like a little judo flip. 100%. Yeah. Nice. Um, so like your content, like when I first started seeing you on TikTok, it seemed to be like a, you weren't in, you were not in Austin at the time. I think you were in New Jersey or New York. Maryland. Or, oh, that's right. You were in Maryland. And you were doing a lot of like, here's a great workout if you are like a football player and you want to do a running workout. Or here's a great workout for a soccer player and you <laughs> want to like run in the off season. There was a lot of that stuff. Yes. Um, that came from your other background, which is you're a personal trainer, right? 100%. Okay. Um, do you think that, I mean, I feel like a lot of the people that were following you early on in those TikTok days were people from those sports who maybe used to be football players, used to be soccer players, and are, are now like getting into running. Is that right? A hundred percent. And I, I mean, at that point, Kofuzi too, like I was just trying to like, I was getting my feet wet. And I started realizing that there was like an interest for outsiders from running to find a way where they can start their own activity, right? Especially in the running mm -hmm. the world. So yes, I would say a lot of my followers at that point were not runners. They were probably other athletes. Yeah. And so like, um, 
one of the things that I'm thinking about is like, I feel like you speak to a lot of people that I think the running industry right now, and I guess I'll consider myself kind of like part of the running industry, like don't always talk to you that well. Would you agree with that? 100%. Yeah. Um, but then I also feel like sometimes like then people like you come around and we're like, all right, this is the guy we need because he's going to bring more runners in the space. And I think you've done a great job at that. Um, but do you always feel like you're welcome in the space when when like in the big scheme of things? Because I, I mean, there's sometimes, you know, like I'm saying, there's a lot of constructive criticism out there in the world. Like, what, what do you think? <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I, I don't know if it matters what I think, really. But, okay. Okay. right, I, I mean, honestly, like, for me, it's just I, I love the opportunity to share my story. And to your point, man, I'm not, I'm not a runner, right? I've gotten into this sport, and I've started to, 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 to learn more about it and, and, and enter the community in a way that I know how, which is just being a positive light. But I totally understand why some people might not like my content, and especially mm -hmm. runners. And mm -hmm. For me, I just like, I go to sleep with peace at night, knowing that I'm doing what I want to do in this world, and I can't please everyone, and I'm just not trying to. And I'm sure that there's a lot of runners that are the one percenters or even the ten percenters that don't like me, that don't like my content. They probably see me at races and know who I am, but probably give me a dirty look. And you know, I'm good with that. You know, like I, I, it's okay. Um, I think you know when I first started making content, I knew that I wasn't going to be able to please everyone. And I think when you're in this space, if you try to it's a double-edged sword where it almost becomes the demise of your own brand. Mm -hmm. That's, that's, that's very wise. I'll say, cause I feel like, yeah, yeah, that's, that's hard to figure out. It took me a long time to kind of figure that out too. Awesome. Um, let's get some people in the chat here. Uh, let's see. Um, first let's talk to Jay Preza. He says, yo, Matt Choi, when are you pulling back up in DC? Shoot, I, I actually I might be I might be coming back there not to not not dude I know Jay Preza. <laughs> yeah. um, I think I'll be there by the end of the year. Okay, I'll okay. be there by the end of the year. That's very vague. <laughs> very vague because I honestly <laughs> my, my, my schedule is ludicrous. <laughs> Sometimes I don't even know where I'm going to be in three weeks, let alone yeah. you know by the end of the year. But okay. I have I, I believe I have a trip that's loosely uh, going to be at the end of the year in, in DC. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. The sleep singer says, go Maryland. Where were you in Maryland? I was in Montgomery County. So about 30 minutes North of DC. Okay. Yeah. Cause Carlo Cabrala says, Matt, I've seen you post videos of running in rock Creek park. Are you from yep. Montgomery County represent? There exactly. Um, rambling runner, Matt Chittam says yes to my favorite people. I love that. And then, uh, let's get another one. Daniel Burton wants to know, you got a lot of questions for you here today. Daniel Brent wants to know, how many miles do you run in a week? They didn't like the questions I was asking, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, right now, I'm, I would say I'm running anywhere from like 30, 25 to 40 miles. Um, okay. I'm trying to do a marathon a month. So just kind okay. of doing a lot more maintenance than um, really trying to like get miles in. Yeah, you don't need to build because you're building once a month. Yeah, I, if anything, Mike, I'm in the gym a lot, which I, I miss and I like. <laughs> What, what do you, all right. So like, let's talk about this. Um, you're doing high basic. I mean, like you're not doing a lot of weekly maintenance miles, but you're doing a marathon a week, uh, a marathon a month, which is going to be challenging. How do you fit in the, the lifting into that schedule? Is there a no taper? Is there some tapering? What does that look like to you? Like broad, broad, broad strokes? Yes. I mean, I definitely tapered the week prior to the marathon. Like there's one I'm going to go to this weekend. It's more of a trail marathon in Dallas, Texas. Um, I haven't even announced it. And honestly, Mike, no, you know me as a bib mule. Did you buy a bib? Did you buy a bib? I'm literally right after this call. The next <laughs> task I have is to buy it because there's only five spots left. And I'm hoping that no one in the next 40 <laughs> minutes gets one of those bibs. Um, but to answer your question, a lot of it now is, you know, I mix in strength training, you know, probably four to five times a week, a lot of mobility. Um, I'm not lifting crazy weight like a bodybuilder. A lot of it is functional. A lot of single leg exercises, a lot of plyometrics. Honestly, I live on the sled. The sled is my baby. And a lot of people are like, do you back squat? Do you deadlift? Do you power clean? And I incorporate those things, but I spend almost 20 to 25 minutes every day starting the workout with the sled, going forward, backward, side to side, and just working functional movements. Awesome. You know what? I've been I've been getting into the gym. It's been I something see. I've been meaning to do for like the last five years, and I finally started doing it this summer. The one thing I don't have access to is a sled, and I'm like, I really want to do like a backwards pull because I feel like that would really help my hamstrings out a lot. But I'm like, I'll figure out some something else. There's that's not the only way, but I do feel like 
every time I see other people, I see you doing it. I'm like, I want a sled. You know, we're gonna, I got to get one of these. <laughs> a great way to do it if you don't have access to a sled is go okay. backwards on a treadmill, on a manual okay. treadmill. Okay. And push okay. it like that. All right. Okay. Thanks. I'm going to try that. I'll, I'll post you when I when I try it at the YMCA next time I go. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Uh, all right. Here's one from Shannon. She wants to know, I'm curious and nosy. What's the most Matt ever spent while eating out? I want to go for a meal with Matt's crew. <laughs> Oh, Shannon, you're always invited. I promise you. Um, I guess, I don't know in what kind of context, like put it this way. Me and my brother came back from Indianapolis. We went to Hell in the Hill in Georgia and then VCon and our first meal, I went to In-N-Out and I crushed two double, double cheeseburgers with well done fries. That's kind of like a fast food cheat meal. Mm -hmm. um, but honestly, eating out, I mean, I just, I, I eat for pleasure and for fuel. And a lot of times, like people are like, how do you eat all this massive food before a race? And um, I don't know, my body just digests it and I'm able to still kind of run. But um, I don't have like an exact number. I guess it just depends on if it's a sit down <laughs> restaurant versus like a fast casual. <laughs> all right. So the answer is more than he wants to admit. I think that's what we could take away from that. <laughs> Look, Shannon, you're welcome to join next time I'm in your city. <laughs> uh, all right. Dark Kick says, another former football player on my running journey. I think Manor Runs was also a former football player who's in the chat. He says, it's great to be athletically competitive with myself again. Do you find that a lot of the people that are coming to you, coming free to your content, love the running because it's like, you, like not a lot of people are like playing like 40 years old and over football leagues. Is that, what do you think? A hundred percent. I yeah. think, you know, when you get done with organized football, it's hard to recreate it on your own. So if you don't join like a flag football league, if you don't join like a community in that sense, it's like, like Mike, you can't throw the ball to yourself. Like, you know, like even though I made a funny video like that a couple of weeks ago, but running is one of those things. I always tell people all it needs, all you need is a pair of running shoes and a good attitude and you can do it anywhere you are in this world. And I think it's, you know, it creates very little friction and there's other sports and activities that are very fun to play, but you need people to, to join you and to play with you. So yeah, I think that's why a lot of people get into running because it's very seamless. All right. Now you mentioned earlier, I'm going to, I got a question now. <laughs> um, <laughs> you mentioned that you just did the hell in the hill, the, the brainchild of Jesse Itzler. Yeah. That weird event. Um, tell every, I don't think ever, I'm, I'm guessing maybe half the people here heard what that know what that is. Maybe half don't. Can you explain everyone what that is? Cause it's a, it's a kooky concept. It is. Um, it's the hilliest half marathon in the country where you're basically, well, we were in Rome, Georgia. You know, it started in Jesse's backyard. Um, it was like a driveway series where he hosted friends and family to raise money. But it ended up getting a lot of like it, people got excited about it just because, you know, it's like a huge community event. I think a great way to put it, Mike, is like it's kind of like Boston, New York. It's got that energy of like huge community and support. But because you're running in a, in, a, in a rectangle, you're just running laps, you get to see people, you get to cheer them on, you get to see how they're doing, like whoever's in first place, you might not even know that they're in first because you're just going in laps. But basically, it's, it's the hilliest half marathon. We gained over 4,400 feet of elevation climb over the 13.1 miles. And to put that into perspective, Boston might be the hilliest out of all the world majors at roughly 800 feet of elevation climb. This half marathon is hillier than all of the six world majors combined. So for people to understand, like it is you're climbing up a hill and, you know, you're working the posterior chain, hamstrings and glutes. And then when you run down the hill, your quads get burnt. Yeah. Yeah. I, re I mean, I remember. So it's just basically a giant uphill. You turn around, come back down and you run it back up again until you, until you finish. Yeah. How did you keep track of all the laps? Because it was like 60 laps or something like that. So 60 laps is equals roughly the 13.1. Yeah. Everyone got a clicker. Oh, okay. Um, so that you can kind of lap it every time that you go. Okay. Um, roughly five laps was one mile. Okay. And if you just do the math in that sense, like you'll kind of get to that point. Um, but obviously your watch can somewhat detect it, but you know how the watches are. If you're wider versus cutting the angle, like it yeah. might be a little bit off. So they gave everyone clickers. You could also just look at the, uh, they had a bib. So like you can kind of track how many laps you did. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a couple like mechanisms to track it. Okay. Um, cause I, cause like, but you know, it's okay if it was a little long though. Cause like I was watching the, the footage that you put from the race and it definitely had like a trail race vibe Very um, where it was like, there's, there's snacks, 
you could stop and <laughs> stop and eat for a little while if you wanted to. Um, you know, the aid stations are a tent, not like a row of tables. So I'm like, yeah. definitely. And in, in, you know, in, in the trail racing scene, not that I'm an expert, but like I've done a couple of trail races and it's always like the distances are up approximate. It just gives you an idea of about how long you're going to be out there rather than like this is precisely measured at 13.1 miles or whatever, you know? Exactly. It was a four hour cutoff. So everyone, you know, that was kind of the limit. And some people went a little over and it was awesome just seeing people like cheer others on, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and the thing that I thought was remarkable about it is it seemed like the people that went were not people who normally go to trail races and not even maybe road races. Is that right? Or is that just kind of like, like a hundred percent? I mean, the amount of people, the first thing Jesse asked everyone was, Raise your hand if you ran a 5K. Yeah. yeah. The amount of hands that did not raise, Mike, was insane. <laughs> the fact that people were bold enough to have this be their first half marathon at an incline mm-hmm. was a tremendous, tremendous uh, – it was just awesome to see that because, like, most people would want to do a half marathon on a flat course and something that's easier to introduce them to the sport of running. But the fact that people wanted to choose Hell on the Hill as their first half marathon, I was very impressed. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, I really like that about it. And like the, the energy seemed really supportive there. Um, Manor Run says he died laughing when the Cheez-Its got you in it. <laughs> I love Cheez-Its. <laughs> well, you just like opened the bag and you ate it like uh, like it was like a Stone Cold Steve Austin moment. It was like, ah, you just threw them in your face. I mean, my people loved that I was drinking Bud Lights in Boston. So I was like, you know, I'm not going to do alcohol this time, but I could do I could crush some Cheez-Its. <laughs> oh my god is that your favorite snack running snack or otherwise just like just snacky snack yes like i mean it, yeah. it's funny mike because like a lot of the snacks that i eat when i'm running like when i do these of like what i eat in a day while i run mm-hmm. i don't really snack on it day to day like okay. i eat relatively clean when i'm at home like i don't even have cheese that's available i don't have a lot of those like kind of like packaged snacks even in my house but when I'm on the, when I'm running, I don't mind just kind of enjoying myself and feeling like I'm a kid again. But when I was running a lot of my ultras and trail races, I love Cheez-Its, man. I, I, it was just such a, it's, it, it's high in calories. It just makes you feel like you're at lunch again. And I don't know why, but it brings me back to nostalgia as a kid. And I'm like, I, I thoroughly love it. So are you like a regular Cheez-Its guy or are you a white cheddar Cheez-Its guy? I'm really a jalapeno Tabasco cheese. This guy really? to my core, the ones that kind of have a really strong smell, but I also like the, the cheddar cheese. It's, but the regular ones I can do. Okay. Okay. So that's, that's the, that's the hierarchy. Okay. Like that's the order right there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. Let's, let's go back and I'm going to, it's fitting that you're like the last guy that I've brought on for a, a N H P I month. Because all month I've been asking everybody, how disappointed is your mom? And you're the first person that I ever asked that question um, back in the, lo- in the lost tapes. Um, now, since then, though, you've brought your brother into the fold. How mad is your mom that not only are you have a fake job on the Internet, now your brother is also you guys are just like Tukanka is just playing around. <laughs> like what? How disappointed is she now? I think my mom is even more proud. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yes. I love it. <laughs> um, it's, I think for her, it's one of those things, Mike, where like, it's, you know, like, I think I told you last time, right? Like before I moved to Austin, I was living at my mom. Mm-hmm. Like I was 25, 26 years living at my mom's house. And, you know, most people at that age wouldn't want to take that humble piece of pie to live back home. Mm-hmm. And it was awesome for her to see my growth from living there, working at her dining room table, trying to figure out this social media landscape. And now for her to like see me kind of do collabs and, and turn this into an actual full-time thing. Um, and then to have my brother join along now, it's uh, I think for her, she kind of pinches herself. She's like, Matt, like you're doing it. Like, and I'm like, I was like, mom, I'm just getting started though. I feel like I'm just getting started. Yeah, I mean, uh, now you've got like an entire like enterprise. I mean, you got a business here. And so like, you know, I think like now your mom could say, well, he's, you know, a small business owner. He employs family and stuff too, you know? So like, it makes like it you know what's really my, like, 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 honestly, the goal I had when I first started doing this is like, I wanted to find a way to retire my mom. 
Yeah. And, you know, she's been an executive assistant for major companies, CEOs and presidents. And it's funny how that's a position, Mike, that I now recently hired for an EA. Okay. And I always joke with my mom that like, she's too expensive for me. I can't afford her right now. <laughs> and I said, you know, when, when the time is right, like I'm going to, I'm going to retire my mom and have her be my EA because I think that she would do it better than anyone that I, I can hire. But to your point, um, it is like a small business now. And obviously to your point of being Korean, being Asian American, and obviously even for what this pod is for, it's awesome being able to find other Asian creatives and people that are in that space to empower them that they don't have to go the traditional route of what our parents typically want us to do, which is lawyer, doctor, kind of like going that traditional way. So it is a, it truly is a blessing. Um, did you interview your mom for the position? <laughs> I have not. I, 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 I was overqualified. <laughs> <laughs> was she mad that you were like, you hired someone and you didn't even ask me? She said it. She said, Matt, I thought I was, she's like, you're building, you're, you're building too fast now. Like I thought I was going to be your, your, your EA. And I'm like, mom, you'll have to be a, a senior role in this, in this company. Cause uh, we're still getting started here. All right. All right. Diana Rickard says, yeah, you know, us Asians, we like to keep the business all in the family. LOL. I love that Diana. Uh, and Chris Young said, it's a family affair. Chris, what's up? Yeah. Um, and Jay Prez is back. He's got a social media question. He says, I watched a video that Snapchat story posts are the new wave to make monetary income. Is that true or false for you? Jay, I mean, that's actually, you know, I'm, I'm typically very well versed with all the platforms, but I will say that if there's one spot that I'm very lacking, it's Snapchat. Um, but I know recently, miss, uh, was it Mr. Beast that took him, like he's going all in on Snapchat, I heard. Um so it's, yeah, I mean, I, I think that there's opportunities, there always is. And whether it's on Facebook, whether it's on Snapchat, I think there's always platforms that are, that are lacking the demand of content. And if you start to capitalize on those platforms, I, I think you can make a lot happen. So I, I know that's not a true or false answer for you, but <laughs> I would say lean into it and learn more because I don't know right now. And maybe you're going to tell me about it in, in the next three months. Yeah. Uh, let me ask you this, though, related to that. How do you like typically view like your social media? Do you feel like that is like the way to generate the revenue or is that the way? Is that like basically advertising or like kind of like how a musical artists might like stream, put their music on streaming service, but they make money touring and with merch and all that stuff. Like how do you how do you view the social media? I think of it in two ways. There's definitely the exposure aspect of it to your point of like, yeah, like it's, you want to get more eyes on your content. You want to work with brands and then showcase it on your socials because it's free, right? It doesn't cost us money to create a video. It's only time. I think the second as aspect of it is there's definitely a revenue piece of it because a lot of my income comes through brand partnerships, mm -hmm. whether it's through uh, TikTok or Instagram or YouTube. And there's always opportunities there where you're working with some of the biggest brands in the world and you know, they want you to review a shoe. They want you to review a product. And if that's a way that you're able to generate uh, money, then it's a, it's a big time revenue source. So I think of it in both aspects where most people should build their personal brand if you want to enter this space, because once you're able to build, once you're able to create a story for yourself and people get bought into it, a lot of the other pieces start to happen on, on its own. And you can call it luck. I love the Nipsey hustle quote of when opportunity meets preparation. And that's kind of been a lot of my story of, Hey, no one watched my stuff the first two, two and a half years. And as people started to watch more of it, I just was so consistent with my content that when, when Nike or Adidas or Under Armour hits me up, I'm like, Hey, let's work something out. So I see it in both the exposure play and there's opportunities for revenue. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's, that's interesting. I like that. Um, you've been talking though, because like, I've seen your content and you talk to people that are trying to learn how to become better athletes, but you're also talking to people who are athletes trying to learn how to become better content creators. Um, not necessarily so they can become influencers, but just so they can like, kind of like, again, build their own brand or tell their own stories a little bit better. Um, who are typically is reaching out to you for help in, in that space or who are you talking to there? I love that. I think it's a mixture, Mike. It's like it's definitely your up and coming creators that 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 wants to tap into this space, whether they see my lifestyle and they're like, Matt, like I want to be able to go work with this brand or go travel or quit my full time job. So there's the aspect of whether they're an athlete or not, or they just want to kind of build a presence online. 
it's a lot of people that are in that space. They've either, you know, started to put themselves out there, but they don't have any blueprint or guides on like, how do I work with brands? Do I reach out to them? Do they reach out to me X, Y, and Z, or how much do I charge? Or, you know, all those questions that when you're a creator starting, Mike, when you have, when you don't know what you're doing, it's kind of like consulting. You just kind of give them a proposal. If they say yes, every human's like, I left money on the table. If they say no, every <laughs> human's like, uh, will you do it for this amount? Yeah, so I yeah, think yeah. That game, it's just the most of the people I, that, that reach out to me are people that are in that space of they've already been creating, mm -hmm. but they want a little bit more structure and guidance on how to turn this into a business. Okay. Um, have any athletes ever reached out to you? Because I feel like that is like, you know, because I come from a consulting background too. So I'm like, oh, there's there's businesses here to make, right? And I'm just like, one could be like, I see this problem of professional athletes saying like, oh, we hate these social media obligations in our contracts. We don't know what to do. We're athletes, you know. Um, but then I see people like you saying like, guys, you got a phone. You brought the phone to the track. Like, doesn't it doesn't have to be super intense. It doesn't have to be a production. You can do it. Here's some ways to tell you in your natural voice. And lots of other good advice. Like, I feel like, that's a natural combo. Have you has any have any athletes reached out to you for any help? You don't have to name names if you have to be. Yeah, no, no. I mean, I mean, some have reached out that are just like like their former athletes that that are enticed by the the kind of content I create, Mike. Okay. Um, some have reached out for like advice, just very general stuff of like, mm -hmm. yeah, like how do you like how do you monetize? How do you work with brands? Mm -hmm. But honestly, not as many athletes as you would think. Yeah, yeah, which I, is I, kind of surprising to me too, actually. Yeah, I feel like that should be something like, I don't know, like, like you come out for like, I'm like, hmm, I wonder how much it would cost to send Matt Choi out to a weekend for like in a city where there's like two or three athletes on the same like sponsored team or at least have the same sponsor and have him just be like, like, we're doing a weekend seminar like in your hometown. You know what I mean? I feel like I bet you Matt Choi's already doing that. Let's ask him. I mean, Mike, honestly, I think this comes back to what you said earlier of like, like proper runners, right? Like I think a lot of them, whether they don't want my advice or they don't think mm -hmm. that they could do what I do, or there's that stigma of, oh, he's just another creator guy. I don't want his advice, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So I, I I don't know if that there's a play there. Honestly, I've just made that up in my own head. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, it's funny. When I was at HPLT, my buddy Brian Mazza has a, he has like a lifestyle company and, you know, he had Adrian McDonald, who is an on athlete, who is the winner of Leadville two years in a row. Leadville's a hundred mile ultra race. And, you know, I talked to him about content and I talked to him about how he creates his stuff. And honestly, a lot of his stuff is just pictures. It's stills because he's so locked in on winning races that he's can't, he doesn't want to make videos. He doesn't want to do the, the capturing of the journey. And honestly, I, I have empathy for that. Like, mm -hmm. I guess, because for me, I'm not focused on winning races that my priority is different. And I understand that not everyone's going to want to do content the way I do it. But there's obviously a way there for athletes. At some point, they want to turn themselves into a bigger business. And if you're only getting your validation through winning races, at some point, what happens when you're not winning anymore? Exactly. And yeah. then, this, then this doesn't turn into a job. Like, then you have to go get a real job. So I always challenge that framework of, hey, I get that you don't want to make the video right now. But what happens when you're done with the sport? Like, is your brand just completely done and you're going to go get a job now and, and talk about the good old days of you winning – 20 in 2021 when it's 2035 yeah 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 no i agree i agree like i just uh, yeah i feel like there's like a missed not a missed opportunity but i feel like we should all chat you know what i mean we should be at a big group chat and try to figure out a way to like because i want to hear the stories from the athletes but it's just like i know they're busy but i'm like there's there's a middle ground there's a way you could do it while like you know it's like People tell me I got to get in the weight room. I got to do these squats and stuff. I'm like, yeah, I time. but if I want to get to a little bit of a next level, that's kind of what I got to do. You know, I don't know. I love uh, let's get another question in here. There's one that I really liked. Uh, Calvin wants to know question for Matt. Have you worked with someone mm. that you've been in awe of or star starstruck? Wow. This is a, a great freaking question. And Mike, you know, when I was playing football, like I got so starstruck with athletes, with football players. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what happened, but like there was a shift in my own mindset of like, once I realized that a lot of these NFL guys and guys I looked up to were just regular humans, 
I didn't get as starstruck when I would see them. Like I, I work out here at the collective in Austin. I see Micah Parsons. I see Jalen Ramsey. I see a lot of NFL guys that Mike, if you asked me seven years ago, I would have been like, I want to go take a picture. Like, I'm, you know, like I, 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 I can't believe I'm in the same room. I just touched the same barbell as Micah Parsons, you know? And I don't know when it started to shift for me that I just was like, damn, but you know, these guys get harassed all the time by fans. And at times they just want to be human. And I think to answer the question, when I was first entering the running space, someone I really looked up to was Hella. And I got a chance to meet Hella at Boston Marathon in 2021 when they had it in October because of COVID. And when I saw that he was on the email chain and it said Hella good, I said, oh, shit. <laughs> Shout out to Hella. Um, but he was someone that I just like I'd seen a fall. I had seen him from afar and, and it was awesome seeing his work and his energy and that was someone that I was like, oh, shit, like I'm starting to enter the space now. But mm -hmm. since then, I think also Jesse Itzler was pretty cool to just kind of be around him at Hell in the Hill as someone that I read his book, Living with the Seal. And I, I really like deep, deep dove into him as an entrepreneur. It was awesome just to be around in his presence. Um, but now I, I don't know, man, I get I get so lost in my own stuff sometimes. That I'm like. I, I don't know, Mike. He's like, I don't know if that's egotistical or not, or, uh, you know, I just like, it's, it's, it's fun now to getting to connect with people. But I think it's because I realized that we're all human. And even for me, like, I always tell people like, look, always say what's up to me. Cause like, I'm not one of those guys that's like, Oh no, I don't want to do that. I don't want to take a, like, I'm just a regular guy. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, honestly. And, and I treat that. And that's why I show up the way I do is because I don't think I'm bigger or smaller than anyone. Like I just want to show up as myself anywhere I go. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. I mean, like, I would say that I still get starstruck about like some of the athletes and stuff because I like I feel like they're just different humans than I am. I'm like someone that can run at like like Olympic trials qualifier pace for a marathon. That's just like a different kind of human than I am, you know. And so like I I just that maybe I just revere to the marathon distance so much uh, that so I get kind of freaked out whenever I talk to like a really good marathoner. But I think that what's really like an important thing is like getting over the kind of like the imposter syndrome part. I feel like that's an, a difficult part, but like once you can, then you can start to like really shine in those rooms. You know what I mean? And I'm glad that you're at that point. I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that. I think it also helps that you're like six, three and Jack, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? If I were in the, if I, you know, like whatever, like it, social media, like, like following I have, if I'm in that gym, you know, I am uh, going to be intimidated by those football players. I'll tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Mike, everyone asked me, everyone's like, you're taller than I expected. <laughs> really? <laughs> that might be the, that might be the number one thing people tell me, like, Matt, you, you're, you're much taller than what you look like in your videos. I'm like, I guess the 0.5 lens just doesn't do myself as a uh, justice. <laughs> I feel like that makes you look even taller because like, uh, because it just like, elongates everything, you know. So I'm just like, okay. But you, I mean, you're 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 a big dude, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I saw I saw a question about a boba order. Yeah, um, yeah, okay, yeah. You want that one? All right. I, 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 it's not going to be a good answer because I'm not a big boba fan. See, that's oh. why I didn't get that one because I'm going to get I'm going to lose Asian points on this one. Ex and so <laughs> am I. Right now, I just I don't know why I called myself out to lose Asian points, but uh, I, I'm my brother's more of a boba fan than me. Okay. Um. I'm just like, I'm not too big into like sugary stuff outside of when I'm on a race. So yeah, I'm not, uh, I might lose some Asian points there. Sorry, Brian. Yeah. Brian Lang says, as an Asian American, what's your boba tea order? Mine is, I don't have one cause I don't like the, um, the tapioca balls. I just think that's, mm. a, that's a weird texture, you know, like I don't like, I don't like that. I do like sweet drinks if they're cold, you know, I don't like the sweet hot drinks, but I like sweet cold drinks, but I'm, I just don't, I don't really, I never, I think it I think I was too old when like the trend hit. And so it just passed me over. You know? I think, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's another question that I want to, all right. Calvin says, Thai tea with lychee, gum lychee gummies. I was going to say, Mike, that sometimes the lychee and other gummies, if you don't like the tapioca is better. But uh, once again, everyone's, everyone's got their preference. I'm, I'm with JC. He says, I don't like solids in my liquids. <laughs> 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 I think that's a good way to put it. I just can't eat those things. It's just it like is, something comes through the straw. I just feel like, is there a bug in here? I don't know. There's <laughs> something in my drink. It's, Mike, you know what's funny is I've recently been putting, um, what's it called? 
da- dates, dates oh, yeah. in my smoothies. And sometimes when it doesn't okay. get blended up well, okay. it reminds me of that, that like that texture. But, okay. uh, but yeah, I, I agree with him as well. JC, no, no solids in the liquids. <laughs> All right. We had a question uh, earlier from, let's get it from Eric. Um, where'd it go? Eric wanted to, I don't, I remember what, oh, here we go. It says, okay, question. What is Matt's current favorite running shoe? Let's hear it straight from him. Ooh. I well, just posted a video about it the other day. So I feel like. I, I know. Need. I mean, uh, it's that there's two shoes I've been running in consistently daily training wise. It's the Pegasus 40 and then the Kinvar 13s. Um, okay. I don't know if it's just because I like the yellow and the red in that shoe, but okay. God, it's been a very comfy shoe. I've done a lot of speed work and just daily runs on them. But I would say those two are the two that I'm rotating right now. Okay, nice. Um, here's another one, another one uh, from Corey Allen Running. I think this is going to be a good one for you. What's a good way to tell a story, like a race report, if you didn't capture good content during the event? Mm, I think this is a great question. You know what I would do is, and I think this is done really good through short form, is you know, almost every runner wears a watch. If you're crazy like me, you wear two. If you're like Hella, you wear four. <laughs> Which means that you can always look back at your, your, your mile splits. So I think a great way to tell a story is green screen, the mile splits behind you, make your face super small and just narrate and talk about how you felt through miles one through 10 miles, 10 through 11 through 20 and storytell it in that aspect. Mm -hmm. And that's been going really well. Just green screens in general have done a great job because once again, it allows your viewers to get more bought into your story and how you felt during those times. If maybe you stopped by the bathroom or maybe you had a slower split because there was a hill it's a great opportunity to kind of just talk about what happened at mile 13. Um, that's, that's what I would say, Carrie, in terms of if you don't capture it, narrate it behind the screen. And if you really want to get like proper, throw in a little bit of B-roll in of different shots of the race that are maybe just picture still shots. And that's a great way to kind of storytell it if you don't capture it. That's, that's a really good advice. I like that a lot. Awesome. I would say just make a, a much shorter video or make a much shorter post. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think the mistake that I see a lot of people make is they don't have a lot of content. So they make the stuff that they do have longer than it should be. And I'm watching, I'm like, this footage isn't right. You know what I mean? And I'm like, this should have been cut earlier. I know why there's so much of it. It's not a great angle. It's not a great shot. It's not interesting, but it's because they don't have enough to make four minutes or six minutes, however they wanted to make the video. Yeah. Uh, Or like how, uh, or like to fit the length of the song that they picked. And so I'm like, all right, just make it, make a shorter piece, you know, make it an excellent 30 seconds rather than a mediocre four minutes, you know? That's and so, Mike, something else I've been playing with is uh, it's, it's Descript, this AI, it's an AI uh, software okay. all right. and you can actually incorporate it within the software. They have different stills, videos, and pictures that you can upload it. You could put in marathon running or trail running and it'll it actually give you an option of different, like, just still like just very uh what's it called uh just like og like not even og but just uh what's it called like stock photos stock photos stock okay. photos and videos that you can incorporate and okay. still storytell on the back end with the splits mm-hmm. and all those things so keep that in mind too descript.ai just google it interesting i haven't played with any ai yet i'm trying to think of like what's a fun way to do that but um yeah i don't know are you using it in any other way like are you really like tell me what content i should make next in the voice of <laughs> or like um, how are you using it i would say i'm using it in a few ways like you know obviously you can utilize it for captioning and in like script writing mm-hmm. on a very general scale on like chat gpt but then again you also want the human element right like i'm far from a like mike anytime i have to make youtube videos where i'm following a script the videos suck yeah. i'm so much better ad lib where i'm just being able to have a conversation or just talk but there's an opportunity there for people if you maybe are struggling with like script writing or caption creation. Um, I think there's ChatGPT is great for idea generation, mm-hmm. right? I think that's really where I've been seeing it the best, especially for creators that are struggling to like come up with like a 30 day series or 30 day challenge. That's a great way to just get general ideas. Something like Descript would be great if you have a podcast, if you have a YouTube channel and you want to cut it up into micro pieces and you don't want to hire someone from overseas or hire a whole team or spend time to do it it'll just transcribe all of the audio get it out written and it actually gets uploaded into the video where you kind of have that hormozy style content where the 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 
the text is overlaying the, the screen. Mm-hmm. So that's an option. Um, but I would say those are the two ways that I've really utilized it is idea generation and then breaking down podcasts and like, like longer form content. Oh, that's interesting. Hmm. I'm not, yeah, I'm, I'm like, kind of like, I'm waiting. I'm like, let's see how other people use this first. Not that I'm going to copy, but I'm just like, I don't, I don't know about this seems weird to me. I'm not sure about it. New technology is always a little weird at first. Mike. I, I will say, yeah. um, all right, here's some questions. Daniel Nieves and Brian Lang want to know, what's all the different wrist colors? I love that question. Um, so these are loci bracelets. And I actually, I don't know, Mike, should I, should I tell the people a special announcement? If you want, I mean, if you're going to, yeah, if you're going to like, if you're going to give us like the, uh, the scoop. So this is like, honestly, guys, this is insider trading right now. Um, some <laughs> like, but these are loci bracelets. Um, you know, a lot of it is, it's like a, it's like a mindset. It's like, don't let the highs get you too high. Don't let the lows get you too low. It's like a balanced kind of bracelet. There's water from Antarctica, mud from the Red Sea, which are the highest and lowest points on earth. But each of these bands are for different causes. And Loki donates $1 to every band sold. I have one for Alzheimer's, one for diabetes, one for um, autism, just for family members that have either passed or have different, um, different um, illnesses that I have like, that just resonate with me. Um, but I've recently been talking to the founder, Stephen, and, and, and we, there might be, there might be, this could happen, it could not happen, but there might be a Matt Choi Loki collab um, where we might, where we will donate money to a certain cause, maybe a, something in AAPI, um, and it'll just be kind of an exclusive drop. Um, this is honestly just fairy dust right now. It's just talk. Okay. And the fact I even said it, Mike, it's more me just manifesting it, but you guys just be in tune, but that's what they are. So there are a bunch of different colors, um, but we might have a limited um, Matt Choi drop soon. Awesome. Awesome. Well, you got to let me know so I can be the first one in line to, uh, to pick one up. Um, speaking of like manifesting, I'll tell you what. I'll go first and then I'll, I'll ask you for, for one of your own. Because I, I, I do this on the live stream all the time. And maybe we'll end with this one today. Is like I get... I call them visions. Like just, I'll be running and I'll be like, this will be a great idea. We got to like somehow find a way to build to this. One of that I've talked about a lot is I'd love to be an audiobook narrator. I love audiobooks. I love mm. listening to them when I run. I'd love to narrate them. Um, another one that I had today was like, there should be like a traveling tour of different people that are like, like, like three or four podcasts in a row. And maybe it can, the, the, the lineup can rotate depending on which city we go to. But basically, you know, we all get together, we do the shakeout runs, but that lasts like 30 minutes, you know yeah. what I mean? And then like you hang out a little bit, you grab some selfies, maybe some bagels and coffee and that's it. But I'm thinking something that could be like longer, maybe something we sell tickets to that kind of thing. But like this kind of tour where it's not like a speaking tour, but it's not stand up comedy, but something kind of in the middle, like these kinds of conversations, but in person with people in the chat, but like live, you know, like in person. So that was kind of something that I'm like, how do I manifest that? I don't know how mm. to promote. I don't know how to book theater spaces. I don't know how to do any of this stuff. I'm mean, going to need some people, but I got to put that idea out in the universe so that people that are like, oh, I'm a, I'm a concert promoter and I book venues that are like a thousand people to 3000 people all the time. Let me, let's talk. You know what I mean? So you got to put it out there. Anything like that, you got coming real far vision that you Ooh. are willing to share. Cause sometimes it's hard to share them, but I'm like, if we're manifesting, if we're manifesting the, the wristbands, the, the, the Matt Troy collab wristband, we're manifesting the speaking tour, whatever we're going to call it, the anti running shakeout or something, whatever, <laughs> the no run shakeout, whatever, <laughs> like anything that you got for us. I, I know I'm this you on. we did guys. We did not prepare this question ahead of time. We, we did not. And honestly, <laughs> because I'm just a big fan of Kofuzi, I might actually spill the beans on this. Okay. Um, but Mike, I love your idea. I think that would be amazing. And I think, and honestly, Mike, a separate idea would be we get a whole crew of creator runners that do does TSP together. What's TSP? The Speed Project. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, there we go. That's something that I think is very <laughs> tangible. It's yeah. a little out. It's different than what you're suggesting because mm-hmm. I think what you're saying is actually more connecting with the audience and the mm-hmm. communities, and which is I love doing. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think the speed project with a bunch of creators with Thomas and believe in the run or other guys, like whoever it might be, but like doing that as like a collective whole, understanding that there'd be a ton of content opportunities would be sick. Um, but okay. Okay. something that I'm like currently working on 
that I, I feel like if I actually say this to your community and you right now, that it might even happen even further. Huh? You know, I haven't been back to Korea in 20 years. Uh, Me and my brother went when I was seven years old. So actually it's been 21 years old, 20 years. Um, and there's something called the Four Rivers Trail. Okay. It's a bike path that starts at the border of North and South Korea. And it goes all the way through Seoul and all the way through Korea. It's 374 miles. There hasn't been many people that have done it on foot because it's typically a bike path. Something that I'm working on by the end of the year is to be one of the, one of the first maybe to, to run that on foot. Um, I wouldn't do it in a, I would do it in a row, but it wouldn't be like an old show where it's like 375 miles and go as fast as possible. Um, the math would add up to 15 marathons in 15 days. That would be 375 miles. And obviously Mike, like being able to stop and, and, and go to small towns, small rice farms and, and just talk with locals and soak in my culture I feel like the fact that this is AAPI month for me when I was younger, Mike, like, you know, I was slightly embarrassed to be Korean. I didn't want my mom to pack a Korean meal because I didn't want my friends that were white or black or Hispanic to make fun of me because my stuff smelled different. And now it's funny because when friends visit me, when I go to LA or New York, I always want to brag about, oh, Korean barbecue, let's go get this meal, let's go this. So it's funny how it works when we start to mature and realize that we want to showcase our culture. And I think for me, I want to go find more of it. And I want to go to Korea and soak that in from like my own people in that sense. And that's a project that I'm really working on right now. Logistically, it's a nightmare, Mike. Uh -huh. And that's just <laughs> something that once again, the loci in that, I swear to God, this is shit that I've been working on like so yeah. much right now that I'm, I, I'm a firm believer in manifestation and talking about the things and speaking it into existence. So I'm glad that I'm able to share this. And for anyone that is still on the live or that watches this all the way through, um, that's kind of like a, that's a manifestation that is uh, hopefully going to come into fruition. My goodness, man, that'd be amazing. Um, that's, 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 that's beautiful, dude. Um, I love that. I hope you get to do that. I hope you get to do that really soon too. Thank you, man. That I'm sounds like a great journey. All right, man. That, that, I don't. I don't know how to better end it. I think that's the perfect way. To end it. Let's go. That's it. See you later, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. That was amazing. They, awesome, that, Mike. Real. Thank you so much for having me, man. And thanks for coming back on. And um, and I'm glad we didn't have any technical difficulties today, and we were able to get this out because I feel like this was, it was even better than the first time. The first time was good, but I mean, I feel like it was worth it to do it to run it back a second time. One thousand percent. I'm so glad that uh, we could do it. And thank you for having me as a guest. And I'll see you in Chicago. Awesome. Can't wait. Can't wait All right, now. guys. Take All care, right. everyone. Peace. All right. Uh, tomorrow, guys, there's going to be no video, but um, we will do. Oh, wait. Will there be a video? There will be a video Friday. I'm ready to talk about the Tracksmith Elliot. Um, so that'll be tomorrow. And then we'll do another live stream. Same time as today, 1 p.m. Central. Hopefully, I'll see you there. Um, don't before I send you guys off in the description below, there's all of the links to Matt's stuff um you can check them out in a variety of different places i hope you guys really enjoyed this conversation and uh a i a a n h p i month that's gonna be it everybody while you're out there on the run until i see you again be safe out there everybody thanks <laughs>